cool. But, you know, at the same time, it's like, I feel like I always end up at the stop of my life looking way better than it feels if, um, if I continue to base my life off of that and my decisions off of that. And, uh, you know, this is an opportunity for me to, uh, you know, kind of take back the power in my life, uh, start to make choices for myself, take control. And, um, you know, whether, um, my passions or the things that I want to be interested in going forward, don't bring me another dime. It's like, you know, at least if I'm going to, um, be in a situation where, you know, cause I don't know how much time I got left on this earth. Like I'll be able to be in that bed and be like, I'm cool. Like I've lived, I've lived a lot of life, you know, I've, I've already lived a lot of life in 31 years. I've should have died at least four times. Um, at least, um, but I'm still here. So it's like, you know, at this point it's, it's about, you know, becoming who I really am. Um, which I feel like my life has kind of been on loop since I was four years old of doing, um, the same things, but I definitely don't want to make this a whole like screw football thing because, you know, when I was a kid, you know, you asked my mom, I was, didn't matter what season or what sport was in or what activity I was doing. I was sleeping with a football, you know, I, I still don't know how I know so many former players names that nobody else could know. And, um, and all that information is so deeply rooted in my brain. Like I loved the game of football, but it became a people pleasing tool out of the time, which kind of exhausted, you know, joy and passion. But at the same time, there's natural, you know, shifts in me that take place. And, um, you know, I'm not sure if too many of y'all are familiar with human design, but it's something that I got introduced to recently. And I guess you could kind of say it's like, somewhat similar to astrology. Like, you know, how people will ask you for your name and the time you were born, where you were born. And, um, you put that stuff in and it kind of gives you different information back. And it told me that I'm a manifesting generator, which I was like, okay, I have no idea <laughs> what that means, but reading through it, it's like, I'm somebody that will always have multiple passions, multiple ways of expressing myself and it's very common for me to outgrow certain passions and um, the worst possible thing for a manifesting generator, somebody like me would be to um, think that I am supposed to choose one lane of life, one path and stick with it uh, like most of the world does. And I feel like that's where a lot of my confinement, that's where a lot of my, you know, just isolation and, um, you know, depression can kind of come in. Um, because I don't feel like you can put me, my, me in one box. And when I'm somebody that's not authentically or honestly expressed, you know, at the end of the day, I still am an addict. I am, you know, an alcoholic and those things will come out in different behaviors. You know, I've maintained my sobriety through all this, but there's been multiple different ways and behaviors that my um, acting out has displayed. And it's because of this, you know, lack of passion and lack of fulfillment on the inside that I feel like I need to numb myself to distract from, but yeah, I'm eternally grateful for the game of football. I wouldn't be able to have this conversation or to think things through or be self-reflective if it wasn't for an opportunity to save my life and go to rehab, which the NFL offered me. They also gave me an opportunity to, you know, reestablish myself to, you know, uh, come back into the world and, um, do something productive. Um, provide an example, be a leader, be a difference maker, um, you know, in my craft, but also just in the day to day, wherever I go. So, man, I'm eternally grateful. There's, there's so many people I could thank as well. Um, I don't want to exclude people, but I feel like the people that I should name and should acknowledge, um, number one being my boy, Quay Mack, um, my brother, man, uh, somebody that, um, in 2017, when I got suspended from the league for at least a year, um, I went to rehab, came back, started working at Sprouts. And um, my boy Quay was hitting me up like, hey, yo, when are we going to get back to training? When are we going to start? And I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to do any of this. And I ended up going out there and doing a couple field workouts, but I was not in any type of shape. Like 20 minutes into the workout, I'm like, bro, I can't do this. Like, I'm trying to go. But this is a man that stayed on me 
and has worked with me, been by my side. We've known each other since five years old, playing football against each other, playing football together. 2015, coming out of the draft, I couldn't run one route at the time. I could probably tell you I could run a go route and a slant route, but there's you learn there's so many details to both of those that you don't just run a straight line or like an angle. Like there's details that go into it. And from somebody that coming into the league had no expertise in one route to being somebody that was, um, you know, a number one target and one of the most versatile route runners as far as lining from different positions in the league. That's all the work that that man and I have put in over the course of the last almost decade. So big shout out to you, my boy. Um, man, thank you to, I mean, all the teams I played for Baltimore taking a chance on me with all the red flags that I even had coming out of college with and sticking with me for the length of time that they did um, when I was getting suspended and uh, just struggling, man, um, trying to do everything they could to help me. S extremely grateful. Can't say enough about the Raiders, Oakland and Las Vegas. Reggie McKenzie, GM at the time in 2018, Coach Gruden, just taking a chance off of seeing me running around um, in a pregame workout and that opportunity being enough for me to to change my life. My boy Frank Smith, uh, who's my tight end coach for three years, so those are the best years of my life playing football with the guys that were in that room. Foster, Derek Carrier, man. Amazing memories. Um, yeah, thank you to the Giants. Um, grateful for all the guys there, all the coaches there. Welcoming me and making me feel like family and giving me an opportunity. Um, and also giving me an opportunity to reflect in this time and, um, and, and to make a decision. So, um so many people to thank. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I don't want to make this too long winded, but um, I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity to have connected with all of you and in whatever way that I have, um, you know, I'm not disappearing off the face of the earth. Um, I'm shifting, I'm turning, I'm going to be, uh, you know, going wherever God has taken me next. But, um, you know, this journey will always be something that I hold dear and has helped me to grow and continue to grow um, as a man and in my character. And uh, if you see me, holler at me, talk to me, uh, you know, um, I love y'all. appreciate you. Uh, and that's all I got. Peace.